is still just about a jar. Brighton's hopes seem to fall flat over Easter. Not usually a happy period for the Seagulls in recent years, but three points against Yeovil last week means there is still a chance. There is more than an element of hope and pray about it, with it all depending on events 140 miles or so south of here at the Medeski Stadium. Let's take a check on the teams and Forest in the midst of an end-of-season defensive crisis. The Bournemouth defeat last week having implications beyond the result. Jamie Mackey pressed into service at right back with Greg Halford serving the first of a three-game ban for a violent offence on the south coast, picked up only by video evidence. Well, for their game of the season, Brighton recall their player of the season. Matt Upson has had difficulties with an ankle problem recently, but steps in at the back ahead of Lewis Dunk. Keith Andrews has also been in and out of the treatment room all week, but he brings his nows to midfield. Inigo Calderon and Jake Forster-Kasky come in, while Leonardo Ujoa is the main man up front, hoping to add to his 15 goals this season. Forster-Kasky putting himself about there, winning that comprehensively. Here's Ward. Getting it back from Ujoa. Danny Collins should have the, the matter in hand. But, uh, Lingard sniffing around there, looking to give De Vries a problem. He was also in that wall side against Brighton on the uh, final day last season. Brighton already secured their playoff spot, but it has been a much more transitional campaign. Gus Poyet's protracted departure, but here's an opportunity, Ujo is clean on goal! Well, that is not like him, and how costly could it prove to be? Well, chances don't come any better than this. It's just really a Hopeford forward ball. I'm not sure Joe is really the target here, but you can see at the back, Forrest all over the place. It is slightly a makeshift back four. And Danny Collins drops deep. He plays on Leonardo Joe, who just gets the ball stuck under his feet. He just scuffs it into the turf. That's why it dribbles wide, but what an opportunity. Travelling great numbers. They wanted more tickets than Forrest were actually able to provide them with just the 2,000. Saka is in there and fired in by Derbyshire, got a nick. Yeah, it certainly took a touch off a defender, but it's been much better from Forrest in the final 10 minutes or so. Ben Osborne been heavily involved in the service into a tug guy accident. Good link-up play with Derbyshire, just takes a glancing touch off a defender for the corner. Vaughan. And it goes Derbyshire! Oh, and Kusek with a horror moment! Forest jubilant, and those celebrations no doubt mirrored at the Medeski Stadium. Well, Thomas Kusek is normally so dependable in the Brighton goal. He's kept 17 clean sheets this season. Only Tommy Eaton at Burnley has kept more, but what on earth he's doing here? What he thinks this ball is going to do, or how much pace is on the header from Derbyshire, I'm not sure. Just seems to lose his bearings and really just panic. He's certainly onside, Matt Derbyshire. Does everything right, hits the target, but there's no real pace on the header. He's not headed it down towards the corner. There's not really a decent save that Kusek has to make here. I just think he completely loses his bearings. Looks like he's trying to spoon that ball away. But that is a horrible, horrible goalkeeping error. Buckley. He loses out to Lee Peltier, away by Mackey. Derbyshire's header, now Majewski. Osborne, urged to shoot, and why not? Yeah, I think the goalkeeper's just made a, a horrendous error. As the attacking team, you've got to take pot shots from range, and Ben Osborne really does have a decent left foot. He's got every right to shoot from here. And the cardinal sin is to not keep it on target. Lingard. Stephen McLaughlin there, protesting his innocence up against Jesse Lingard. Is there a foul in there? I'm not sure McLaughlin actually wins the ball, but Lingard certainly throws himself to the ground and gets the free kick. And they're taking it quickly. Calderon across the face. Ujoa is there, but the flag is up. And it just isn't going Brighton's way at the moment. Well, Leonardo Ujoa is saying to the referee's assistant, I was in line. 
We'll get a chance to see whether he's right. But goal scorers, when they put the ball in the back of the net, they never believe they are offside. It's quick thinking. And they can see he's clearly, clearly offside. It's a great decision, and it should not stand. Orlandi. They do, of course, have a new manager to impress, don't they? Stuart Pearce, so... Uh, Take their hands off the wheel yet. And this is where Andre Orlandi just needs to take a breath because, in general play, Brighton have hardly threatened, but from set pieces, if they get the quality right, there's certainly a goal there for them. Oh, and that's a dangerous header. And Ujoa had another great chance, and it's in! Stephen Ward puts Brighton in pole position! On this incredible final day, it is the Seagulls who at this moment, in that last playoff place. Well, Stephen Ward is not the man I would be looking at to turn this game around for Brighton, but how about this for a finish? The composure when the ball breaks to him, a touch off his chest, and he shoots with his right foot. He's the left back, remember, so when that breaks on his right hand side, it's not the most natural finish for a left back, but he tucks it away absolutely beautifully through the legs of Matt Derbyshire. He can't react quick enough. And I did say from set pieces, if they can keep the pressure on, Brighton could have got a goal, and that's exactly what has happened. All the pieces are coming together. His fourth of the season, and by a long way, the most important yet for the former Wolves man. Well, he finishes it like a centre-forward, how he adjusts his body to kill that ball, take the pace off it with his chest, and then keep his composure, most importantly, keep the ball down. Would have been very easy to blaze that over the bar. And what an important goal that could prove to be. And that's really switched on, looking for Buckley. Peltier got in there, crucially. More from a Reading perspective, perhaps, than... Nottingham Forests. Orlandi. He'll take aim. Got a nick. And De Vries able to handle it. Oh, it's one of those for a goalkeeper when the ball is bouncing. There might be some topspin on it. You're not sure whether you've gone down too early. Is it going to bounce over you? That's when a shot like that takes a deflection. The keeper's really got to concentrate. Majewski. Osborne's delivery again. It's a threatening one. They need to defend it right. Tudgay is in there. Oh, fired with real venom by McLaughlin. And Kushak producing on this occasion. That's a really clean strike, good positioning though from Thomas Kushak. That's absolutely vital here. But the most important thing is he doesn't try to catch this, just palm it away, get it to safety. And that's a really good stop, it was travelling. away by Forster Kaski on this occasion, Harding underneath this for Forrest. David Vaughan, out here to Majewski. Really fist across, and Tutke was arriving. And Gordon Greer just about does enough. Important thing for the centre-half here, he gets shoulder to shoulder with Tudgai, doesn't give him any room to flick that ball past him. Will Greer doesn't win the ball, he makes it very hard for Tudgai to actually hit the target from that angle. That's a bit of support, Cox will provide some. He's done well, guiding it to Mackie, here's Majewski, he's round the back! Keith Andrews showing a really cool head. But Peltier turned here, but he'll be able to deal with the situation. It could have been one of those, another one of those horror moments for Thomas Kushak at his near post. I guess his angle's right, just manages to keep this uh, attempt out from Majewski. I'm pretty much sure it's a cross, just he gets it all wrong, but Kushak does well to keep it out. Luar Luar. It's opened up for him! Well, 
for a moment you thought it was going to be one of those truly special cameos from Kazenga Lualua. Well, by his reaction, I'm presuming this is pretty close, but he is a player who can explode into life. Just fact, I think the fact he strikes it with the outside of his right foot means it's always just drifting wider that far post. But he absolutely thrashes it. Another opportunity passes Brighton by. He thought it was it. Solly March, he's in behind. Ujoa waits. Can he pull it back? It's Buckley! Oh, incredible! Buckley still! And De Vries intervened. Well, maybe, maybe that was the moment and Brighton could not take advantage. For now, at least. Lua Lua. Solly March. Now then. The uh, referee not interested in that. Trying to manufacture one there, Solly March. Well, it's absolutely in the referee's mind that March just thinks that ball in between two defenders and then goes to ground. He isn't fouled. He's looking for the free kick, but Brighton coming on strong here. It's almost as though someone's flicked the switch. Suddenly there's a great deal more urgency and a great deal more in the way of intensity. But Brighton had a glorious moment to perhaps take that playoff place. Yeah, it was great work initially from Solly March to get into a key area in behind Lee Pelche. Picks out an excellent pass, but it all gets closed off so quickly. Defenders and goalkeepers in the face of Will Buckley just can't get a clean shot away. This is Solly March again, just surging in behind Lee Peltier. What an opportunity this was for Buckley. He's closed down there and just can't get the ball out of his feet enough to get a shot away. And this is Solly March. Was there a challenge in there? I don't think there's a foul in there. I think March is looking for a free kick. It's a clever bit of skill. And I think he's going to ground, looking for either a free kick or a penalty. Referee right not to blow. Craig Mackell Smith on. Forster Kaski, now Calderon, deflection, and De Vries producing a terrific save. He's not been severely tested all afternoon, but he pulled it out there. It was a really smart save, it was a decent height actually for De Vries, that's why he was able to get that big left hand up and claw this away. There's a touch off Dan Harding as well, and actually is a great stop. Five crucial minutes. Now McLaughlin for Forrest, up to Cox, and oh, he's got away from Greer. Osborne wanted it, Cox wanted something else. He'll get another opportunity, Cox, did it strike the hand? Well, strike may be the operative word. It may have been just outside the box. Lua Lua, on he'll go, Mikael Smith. Into what he shot! Incredible! In stopping time! Brighton on the brink of the playoffs! They prized open the door to the Premier League! Well, Ujoa is the hero, but how about this for a cross from Craig Mikhail Smith? He's had a horrendous season with an Achilles problem. He's not scored the goal, but I tell you what, he has laid it on a plate for Ujoa who has hardly had a kick in the game, but all he wants is an opportunity in behind defenders with the ball on his forehead, and he buries it. Luawa does all the hard work as Brighton bursts forward. Greg Mikhail Smith, great movement down that left wing, but just watch this, the quality of the ball in. He knows exactly what he wants to do, gets it out of his feet, and this is an absolute piece. Standing around watching is Danny Collins. Ujoa is on the move, he makes sure he stays on side, but the quality of the cross, outstanding, and Ujoa is not going to miss from there. Well, look what it means, and listen to what it means from the Brighton fans. Well, still, events elsewhere could change the picture. Nothing is guaranteed yet. But an outpouring of emotion from everybody associated with Brighton and Ove Albion. I'm sure Oscar Garcia will say that was my plan all along. There was no panic, I knew one opportunity had come along. Doesn't matter whether it's in added time or not, I knew we'd win the game, but that could be 
a massive goal in Brighton's season. The final whistle could not come quickly enough. City ground in stoppage time. Leonardo Ujoa scoring the goal, which will take Brighton into the playoffs. For so long they thought the chance had passed them by, but they have reached out and grabbed it. And Mackel Smith, who has had such a torrid season through injury, the man who made it happen with that wonderful delivery, and the Argentinian did what he was always going to do with it. And their Premier League dream is still alive. Thomas Kuschak can forget his moment of abject horror in the first half. And their season is prolonged. Extraordinary Andy Hinchcliffe. Absolutely incredible. The Championship is a crazy league. Fantastically crazy for the Brighton fans. Extraordinary. They certainly did play well in this game. I don't think Oscar Garcia will say that his side really deserved to go and win this game. But it's all about quality in the final third. And Craig McHale Smith with that drifting cross in towards Rishoa provided it. And the big Argentinian buries his header and Brighton are in the playoffs and where they go from here we'll have to wait and see but what an opportunity for them.